All right, well, a cool event was held recently. Last week, the Inventors Workshop uh, in Mammoth Lakes. Sierra Wave Media's Rob Gill filed this story. Uh, my husband and I are on a mission to help kids actually become good thinkers, creative thinkers, good question askers. I'm a college professor. He's a researcher, a PhD physicist. And we both encounter students that come in and they just don't know how to think. You know, they've been through 12 years of bubbling in bubbles and they don't know how to think. And so one of the things that we like to do is to set up experiences like the Inventors Boot Camp that puts them in a position they have to think. It's not just all spoon fed to them. And so it's a lot of fun to watch. Monday morning, these guys walked in, they had no idea what they were doing. There was like two kids that had used Arduino, a couple of kids that had touched a 3D printer, but most of them had never done anything. And now they're all freaking out because they don't have it running perfectly. But if you think in three and a half days, they've got something running. And so what we're hoping is this, they're not going to come out of this professional programmers. No. But we're hoping it catches their fire. Well, you know, we gave them all a challenge and we gave them a basic set of tools. We said, here's an Arduino, here's a 3D printer, here's how you design. Basic set of tools. And then we said, go home and bring in stuff. And so they brought in boxes and bowls and zip ties and just a lot of random stuff, right? And if and you look around, probably, they all have totally different... Um, manifestations of the same, they all have the same challenge, but it's all totally different. And so it's a huge skill to be able to say, okay, here's the problem. What do I need to do to get to the solution? And even if I have an 80% solution, that's pretty good. Given three days ago, they had a 0% solution. So we're, we're pretty excited. In this one, we have this giant rock. I don't, I don't even know where we got it, but it looks like a big asteroid. So they have to de design a probe that goes to the rock. They all have different sensors, and so they'll activate differently. And so they have to go down using motors uh, to the asteroid and then come back up. So when the sensor's activated, it goes back up. So we have a crane, basically, to lower and raise a probe to explore an asteroid as the rock here. Um, it has wires connecting to the motor to make motor run. Under it we have a spool with thread that connects into the probe to lower it. Um, down here we have a magnetic sensor to sense this magnet when it reaches a certain distance from it to stop it and retract it. Um, it's balanced by these two pieces of string, some knots of string. It took a few days to build. Uh, it'll sense the asteroid once we actually deploy it for testing. But right now, uh, Antonio here just reprogrammed um, our drone, or Arduino, so that when it's, it, after like it's gone down for the 30 seconds, um, that it will actually go back up and take the drone back up. But we're going to test that right now to see if it actually worked. What are the age groups for this? The, the target, uh, the ideal target is middle school, high school. Um, we have a couple of kids that are younger and um, one of them has his parent with him. And so that makes it, because the younger kids get it. We've taught kids that are in fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, they get it, but they need a little more um, structure around the problem. You can't just say, here's the thing, go do it. And so when we do it with younger kids, we do give a little more structure to, you know, by the end of today, you should have this done, and by the end of this period, you should have this other thing done. And that works out really well. But our target group really is the middle school, high school kids. Because those are the kids that are trying to figure out, what am I going to be when I grow up? I am loving it. I would definitely return, and I suggest others to do it as well. Um, it's definitely been a very fun learning experience. All right, cool stuff. Thanks for that. And some information on hantavirus from Dr. Rick Johnson, Inyomono Health Officer, who notes that although mice carry the hantavirus all year, this is the start of the season when humans typically begin activities that put them at risk being exposed to the hantavirus. Now, spring cleaning activities, such as opening up closed buildings that have been unused over the winter, often provide habitats for deer mice and become sites for human exposure to the hantavirus. Although hantavirus infections are relatively rare, it is not unusual for us to have several cases per year in the Eastern Sierra, according to Dr. Johnson. Urge you to see our website, sierrawave.net, for much more on precautions and recommendations on avoiding hantavirus. And also, I urge you to see our website for a great story on a golden eagle that was rescued, rehabilitated, released, 
and reunited with its mate. The wonderful Cindy Kamler of the Eastern Sierra Wildlife Care Center wrote the touching tale of the Golden Eagle and the many fine people who helped the majestic bird back into the wild. Again, urge you to see our website, sierrawave.net. Great story. We thank Cindy Kamler and her team for all they did and all they do. And coming up this weekend should be some wonderful music made in the Eastern Sierra. Sierra Wave Media's Rob Gill talked with Chamber Music Unbound's Brian Schult and Rebecca Hang. <laughs> Unbound is a local nonprofit, and we offer year-round music education programs, year-round concerts. Um, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about classical music specifically, uh, um, we teach a music appreciation class at Saracosa College. Um, and we're also happy to invite volunteers to help out at the concerts for free admission. Yeah, but best of all, come to the concerts. Uh, there's no better way of getting to know chamber music rather than coming to a live concert. I think it's a very different experience from listening to a recording, and while recordings are beautiful, I think uh, a live performance beats them anytime. <laughs> there is a beautiful concert coming up. Uh, the title is A World on a String. And what it is, it's just string instruments. You're used to hearing us play piano uh, trios and piano quartets, but this is a strings-only concert, no piano involved, and we have four string players, two violins, a viola and a cello, and it's called a string quartet. It's one of the most beautiful genres of chamber music, and we are preparing three pieces that each piece in itself is just unique and gorgeous. There's a string quartet by Joseph Haydn, followed by a rarely heard string quartet by Leos Janacek. I'm not sure I pronounced the name correctly, but approximately Leos Janacek. And last on the program is one of my favorite pieces of all times. Um, it's the so-called Harp Quartet by Ludwig van Beethoven. Our first program is at Bishop Union High School on Friday, May 1st at 7.30 p.m. A repeat concert at Saracoso College in Mammoth Lakes on May 2nd, that's a Saturday evening also at 7.30 p.m. Tickets are online at chambermusicunbound.org. All right, thanks for that. Friday in Bishop and Saturday in Mammoth, chambermusicunbound.org for more information. We'll be back with a weather report.